What is up you guys? This is Mini Superheroes Today. And today's video is going to have massive spoilers for Marvel's What If. So if you haven't seen the latest episode or the episode you clicked on this video for, be sure to turn away and come back after you've seen it. Somehow Marvel What If gets better every single week. This is my favorite episode yet. The zombies were just unbelievable, seeing all these different characters interact, uh, it was just so awesome, I absolutely loved it. But, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to build every character from the episode, because there were so many to build, and so many that LEGO has never made. So if you're into this kind of video, be sure to hit like and subscribe down below, because I do videos like this every week for every new piece of Marvel content that comes out. And yeah, without further ado, let's jump in and show you how to build every character from the Marvel What If episode based on the zombies. Okay, so the episode starts off just like Infinity War with the Hulk crashing into the Sanctum Sanctorum, and we only see him for a few seconds, but I went ahead and used the Endgame Hulk, just because I like that shade of pants for Hulk in this era, and yeah, that's about it. Now, this would be the same figure I'd use for the Hulk that shows up toward the end of the episode, but we'll talk about that when we get to Scarlet Witch. Now, the next character we see, per se, isn't really a character, it's the Cloak of Levitation, which... I guess could be argued as a character, but that should be a separate video. Anyway, what I used here are just a bunch of one-by-one -one studs, and then between the second to last one and the last one, I put on Doctor Strange's cloak. Now, Doctor Strange's cloak has come in several sets, and the one I used here is from the very first version from 2017, because it's all one piece and it's easier to clip on there like that. Uh, you can use any of them, I just used this one for how easy it was to clip between those two studs. Here we have Bruce Banner in the robes he takes from the Sanctum Sanctorum, and it's what he actually wears for the majority of the rest of the episode. So the hair I used is just this tussled black hair. It's come on Tony Stark. It's come on several places over the years. The face is from Bruce Banner from Infinity War or from Thor Ragnarok. Of course, you can't get more accurate for Bruce Banner than the head that came on that character. This torso is from Kai from the Lego Ninjago movie with some bare tan arms and some brown hands on there to represent like the glove wrap things he's wearing. And then the legs are honestly kind of random. I just took them off of Ayla Secura because I thought that they looked kind of Sanctum Sanctorum-ish, but you could really use whatever you want there. I don't really think it matters too much. Shortly after Bruce Banner walks out of the Sanctum Sanctorum, Ebony Maw and Call Obsidian show up, just like in Infinity War, so these are the Infinity War figures for both of those characters, and, you know, jumping ahead just a little bit, Ebony Maw does become zombified, so the head that I used is this character from Hidden Side. Now, truth be told, I don't remember his name, but I'm sure somebody will drop a comment below and remind us, but yeah, I think that that head just looks really good for a zombified Ebony Maw. Next, we see Tony Stark and Wong and Doctor Strange come through a Doctor Strange-style portal, and of course, they've all been zombified. So, really, I just used the base of those characters and built up from there. So, for Wong, it's the legs, arms, and torso from the Infinity War Bricktober pack Wong with the zombie head and some gray hands on there from the Monster Fighters days. Now, there are a couple different zombie heads that LEGO has made over the years. You'll notice that these two are the same head, they're kind of older, but then most recently with the Marvel CMF, we got Zombie Captain America, which is actually based on this episode. So, throughout the showcase, you'll see me using different heads. Really, I just wanted to give you guys different options. I really think they could be interchangeable the whole way around. If this color is more accurate for the what if if zombies, but honestly, whatever you guys think looks best or whatever you have in your collection is what I would recommend. So now we've got Wong out of the way. We'll push him back and we'll bring Tony Stark up a little closer. I used the torso and legs from the Mark 50 Iron Man from Infinity War. And then I told you about the head I used already. And I put some brown hair on there to make it screen accurate. Then of these three, the most detailed one was definitely the Doctor Strange figure. So I used the leg and hip piece from Doctor Strange. I also used the torso from Strange, but I flipped it around and put a little medallion around him from the Lego collectible minifigure series. That way you can see his little eye of Agamotto that's hanging there. 
Then I used several parts from Zombie Captain America. Of course, this arm and this leg are from Zombie Captain America. This arm is uh, the sea... I'm trying to think what his name is. Like the lighthouse guy, the sea sailor from the Lego Collectible minifigure series. Of course, the hands are from Zombie Captain America. The head is from Zombie Captain America. And the hair is Doctor Strange's hair from Infinity War with the kind of white hair on the side. So, wow, that was a lot of detail across three characters, but it was nice to knock them all out at once. Speaking of knocking them all out at once, Wasp shows up and kind of kicks some serious butt against all five of those characters we just made. So here to build Wasp, I used the torso and head, or more accurately the helmet from Wasp from the Ant-Man and the Wasp Lego set. You'll have some blue arms on there, and what I did is I took a pair of handcuffs and cut the chain out from between, then put it back on. That way she has her little gauntlets on there, kind of all powered up. The legs come from Aisha from Lego Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and then you'll see she's got her wings on the back here, which come from the character Beetle from Lego Spider-Man from way back in 2013. Now, if you lift the helmet up, you can see that I've got a regular head under there that was a placeholder, but I made this head for Hope as well, so, you know, throughout the episode, a good bit, she actually has her helmet off. So to build that version of her, this head comes from Tina Goldstein from Lego Fantastic Beasts, and the hair is actually Ray's hair from Lego Star Wars, but I did take a little wire cutter and cut off the bottom bun because that bottom bun won't fit over the wings. So I really do think it looks a lot like Hope and it's a great way to do it, but you will have to break one Lego piece in order to do so. Not long after, Spider-Man swings in to save the day, so of course we're using the collectible minifigure series Spider-Man since it's literally based on this episode, and the figure is perfect as is, so I have no updates I could possibly make. It just looks that great. So here we have Hank Pym from the Quantum Realm flashback, and I realized I actually never built this suit. I still want to work on it. I don't think it's perfect, but it's enough for today's showcase. Definitely fills some gaps. So I used the body from Ghost from Lego Ant-Man and the Wasp. The head, although he doesn't have glasses on in this scene, the head still works pretty well, and that's from Dumbledore from Harry Potter. Then, of course, this helmet piece comes from the Lego collectible minifigure series from one of the space villain characters. We briefly see Janet Van Dyne in the Quantum Realm, and she's the one that caused this whole zombie outbreak mess. So to build this, I used the helmet from Ant-Man from Avengers Endgame. It looks enough like her helmet that I think it looked pretty good. The torso is from a Resistance Trooper from LEGO Star Wars, but I flipped it around, so you're actually seeing the back side of that torso. Looks pretty good. Put some tan arms on there with gray hands for her gloves and black legs to round out the entire figure. When Hank and Janet pop out of the Quantum Realm, we briefly see Ant-Man from Ant-Man and the Wasp, so let's include him in the video. Of course, the helmet is Ant-Man's helmet from Endgame, the torso and legs are from Ant-Man from Ant-Man and the Wasp, and the arms are actually from the collectible minifigure series Surfer Dude. I really like that it adds some red detail to the black arms, and it really pulls the whole figure together. So we do get a little flashback to the zombie outbreak, and we see these five Avengers get off a Quinjet right onto the bridge, which I honestly thought was kind of dumb. Like, why would they land on a bridge surrounded by zombies? Anyways, they must have never seen The Walking Dead. Here we have Captain America, and to build him, I just used the design I used for my endgame Captain America. It's similar enough. The legs and arms come from Captain Carter from the Lego Marvel collectible minifigure series. The torso is from endgame Captain America from the sets, as is the helmet and the head. And of course, the shield comes from there too, so that makes it pretty easy. Moving back, we have Black Widow and Iron Man. Iron Man is the exact Mark 50 figure from the Lego sets from Infinity War, so nothing to add there. And Black Widow is almost exactly the same. The only thing I changed out was her legs, which come from the Electro figure from Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes, they did make an Electro from Amazing Spider-Man 2. If you didn't know, you should look it up. It's a pretty interesting figure. Then our last two Avengers from this scene, of course, are Hawkeye and Black Panther. To build Black Panther, I used the legs from, uh, oh, what's his name? Zor-El? No. What's his name from, uh, 
from Superman. I'm totally blanking. You can tell I'm not going to edit this because I'm just going to leave it in. Somebody can comment and let me know. <laughs> the head, the headpiece, and the torso are from Civil War Black Panther. And then, ironically, the arms are from Zor-El from the Lego Batman movie uh, collectible minifigure series. Man, I can't remember the guy's names that those legs come from. Drop a comment and let me know. Then we have Hawkeye in his Civil War outfit. So to build this, I used the head and hair from Hawkeye from Age of Ultron. The torso is from Hawkeye from Civil War. The legs are just kind of the modern tactical legs we've seen on a lot of Marvel characters recently. The short-sleeved arm with the black glove comes from Ethan Hunt from Lego Dimensions, Mission Impossible. Flipping him around, you can see I put a little quiver on his back. And then he's got a bow and arrow in the arm from Huntress from the Lego DC Collectible Minifigure series. Here we have Happy Hogan, always nice to see him again, and he's back to being clean shaven. So I used the hair and head from Peter Venkman from Lego Ghostbusters. I thought that that looked pretty good. I just used this uh, torso from, I think her name's Marceline from Lego Dimensions Adventure Time. Then I put some dark gray arms on there. Always remember to wear long sleeves. One tan hand and then a red hand for his Iron Man gauntlet glove that he was wearing. Then I just threw some jeans on there to make him look a little more realistic. A big surprise for this episode was seeing Kurt from Ant-Man. I always loved this character. He's hysterical, popping up. Really random to include him, too. But anyways, to build this, I used the Mechanics body from the LEGO Collectible Minifigure series with some tan hands on either side. The face is from the Shield Agent from LEGO Marvel or from Ray Stance from Ghostbusters. Then the hair I used is this greaser hair that ironically comes from the same character, the CMF. So, yeah, pretty cool. As you can tell, we're working our way through the survival team. So here we have Bucky Barnes. The one I used here is from the Bricktober pack from 2018 from Infinity War. It's hard to get to much more accurate than that. The only thing I changed is adding this hair. I think the character's name is Sirius Black from Harry Potter. But yeah, uh, you don't even have to do that. You could use the hair that came on the figure. But I think it did make it that much more accurate. Up next, we have Sharon Carter, and Sharon Carter was pretty easy to make because I just used her actual Lego minifigure for everything but the arms. For those, I used the arms from Dorothy from the Lego Movie 2 collectible minifigure series because she does have rolled up white sleeves. I do have a question about Sharon, though, from the episode. So this episode is supposed to take place in 2018, around the time of Infinity War, but from what we know in Falcon and Winter Soldier, wouldn't she have already been overseas as the power broker by this time? I thought that Falcon and Winter Soldier told us that she went on the run after helping Team Cap, and that's when she became the power broker overseas. So for her to be on their zombie survival team, wouldn't she have had to, like, travel order them go pick her up? I don't know. Drop a comment and let me know what you think of that. It kind of confused me. Up next, we have Okoye from Black Panther and Wakanda and all that. So I gave her this black spear. Uh, around her hips, I gave her this little, uh, like, drape piece, although I don't remember where that came from, the skirt piece. Drop a comment and let me know. The legs are from some old castle sets from years and years ago. I think it's just from some generic castle person. The uh, torso is a Dora Milaje torso from Black Panther, and the head comes from Okoye from Black Panther as well. At least, I'm pretty sure it's from Okoye. I've mixed up a lot of my Black Panther parts, so I can never remember who's who. The next zombie character we meet is Zombie Hawkeye, and all the pieces are the same from Hawkeye from before, with the exception of the arm and the head, which come from Zombie Captain America from the LEGO Marvel Collectible Minifigure series. Here we have Zombie Falcon, which was really crazy. It's nuts to think that the guy that would become Captain America actually is a zombie in this timeline. Well, I guess even Captain America was a zombie, so the super soldier is not immune. Anyways, the legs come from the spy from the Lego collectible minifigure series. The torso is from Infinity War Falcon. The wings are from Civil War Falcon. This arm comes from like the taxi driver zombie. Just an interesting little thing to add there. You'll notice in the episode he's missing an arm, so I just took his arm off completely. The face comes from the Lego collectible minifigure series zombie character, and the hair comes from Falcon. Speaking of zombie Captain America, we actually see him at this point in the episode, so I made no changes to the zombie Captain America from the collectible minifigure series because why mess with perfection? 
the team gets summoned to the New Jersey Shield base by none other than Vision. So it was really cool to see him. And of course, Paul Bettany is back doing the voice. I made no changes to the official Vision figure that LEGO gave us because, once again, why mess with perfection? One of the craziest things was seeing Scott Lang's head in a jar, and of course, I had to build it in Lego form. So you'll remember that the Cloak of Levitation actually kind of pairs up with Scott to move him around, so I used that same technique from before of putting that between studs, but here's how I actually built the Scott Lang head. So the most important piece that you'll need is the bubble from Sandy Cheeks from Lego Spongebob. That goes around the character. I used this tussled brown hair and the face from Poe Dameron, then underneath there, you can see that there's a tan stud that goes into his head. So after the tan stud, you'll put this bubble around it. I have a black stud underneath there that you can't hardly even see, but it's right underneath my pointer. So the order is hair, head, tan stud, sandy bubble, then the cape, then there's a black stud under there, and then beneath that, you'll see this little two by two round piece, and then underneath all of that is the clear pieces that are making it look like it's levitating. So it's not that difficult to build, but it is really intricate, if that makes sense. Up next, we find Black Panther with part of his leg taken off. I guess that Vision is slowly feeding him to Wanda. Honestly, that's pretty disgusting to say out loud, but... To build this, I actually went ahead and used the torso from the Infinity War slash Black Panther movie version of Black Panther. I know technically he would still have his Civil War suit on, I guess, because that's what we saw him wearing earlier in the episode. And how you know it's the Civil War suit, of course, is because the mask didn't show his eyes. It had, like, the white eye covers. Anyways, I went ahead and used this torso for that. I did pop off a leg, though, because, like I said, you know, he's missing a leg. And I gave him one of the crutches from the Lego collectible minifigure series. Then, of course, the hair and head also come from the Marvel collectible minifigure series, T'Challa Star Wars figure. He's a little too smiley for the circumstances, but it is the only head we have for Chadwick Boseman as of this time. Then they run into the zombified Scarlet Witch, which was honestly terrifying. To build this figure, I went ahead and used the Civil War version of the character, which of course gives you black legs and this torso. I put some gray hands on there for her zombie hands. I gave her the zombie head we were using earlier for like Wong and Iron Man and all that. Then of course she's got her big, long, flowing locks of hair. So I really like the way this one turned out. And honestly, a Scarlet Witch is zombified is terrifying to think about. The episode leaves us on a huge stinger showing us a zombified Thanos, so here's zombie Thanos. I used the legs from Batman from uh, Justice League and all that, so you get the black boots on bottom with gray pants on top. This torso is actually from Harry Potter, or there's a character named Vern that has an almost identical torso from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but you want to flip that around so that you just get the dark blue with some detailing on there. I used gray arms on either side. Of course, I gave him the Infinity Gauntlet and the shoulder bracket from Thanos, the Mighty Micros version. Then I gave him that zombie head we've been using the whole time. So with that being said, let's zoom out and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit like and subscribe down below for more videos just like it. And in the meantime, be sure to let me know what you thought of this episode, who your favorite characters were, and if you'd like to see a part two. I almost want to make a video talking about that, but all in good time. See you guys next time. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. You should hit like and subscribe down below for more LEGO content from me because I post just about every single day. You'll be up to date on all the latest in LEGO, so why not join my community and hit subscribe now.